What's up, guys? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> let me explain. I know it's been three months. Like I said, I was gonna be gone for three months. Welcome to the Mini Clean Online channel where I now react to crime videos, scary videos, and I post stuff that wouldn't be on my main channel over here. Don't know, my main channel as I'm making this video has a false community guideline strike. And I'm so bored and I miss making videos so bad that I'm gonna post on this channel. So I thought I'd react to this video called The Evil Teenager Who Killed His Eight-Year-Old Neighbor. This isn't really like scary videos, this is kind of like shocking scary. I want to give these videos a try because, you know, um, I've been watching these videos a lot recently. It's kind of just one of those things where you just binge watch at night. So I thought, why not make some content out of this? As you know, we have zero edits on this channel and it's, I'm not saying that like the main channel where I put edits, like I'm talking about there's no edits on this channel at all. So, um, play the intro. By 2015, the state of California- I told you, bro. We get straight into it. None of that bull crap. If you guys do want more of these videos, subscribe, I guess. But, um, like I said, we're doing everything raw, no edits over here. ...when eight-year-old Madison Middleton went missing in Santa Cruz. After the shocking discovery of her remains disposed of in a dumpster, all eyes what the were on the mystery teenage suspect, who later would be found guilty of the horrific crime. His name- like for like, I, I'm not gonna pause a lot because I don't really do that on this channel, bro. But for you to be like, what do teenagers like? What goes through a teenager? You know what I'm saying? What goes through a teenager's head to do this crap, bro? I guess we're gonna find out. I guess, but shit. Name was Adrian Gonzalez. Adrian welcome or welcome back to Twisted Minds. My name is James, and today we will be looking at the tragic death of Madison Middleton. Madison Middleton went missing from the Tannery Art Center on July 25th, 2015. Okay. At the time, the Tannery Art Center was a complex that housed several apartments in Santa Cruz. Madison lived there with her mother, and so did Adrian. So, you see, the two were neighbors. Barely 24 hours after Madison was declared missing. So they lived in an apartment together, but they were neighbors. Okay. I thought they lived in a house, and they were like... They that doesn't even fucking matter, Mini Clinton. Things took an unfortunate turn when she was found dead in a large trash container. Just like that, Damn. a missing person case had become a murder investigation. According to the district attorney of Santa Cruz at the time, whoever killed Madison took great lengths to hide her body because they had been looking for her prior to that time. And that just made the case even more nerve-wracking. If you were wondering, the Tannery Art Center is a facility constructed for the public, which means that it is a non-profit project. The facility contains about 100 budget lofts. Around the time of Maddie's murder, the building housed about 250 occupants. And see, this is the thing, right? I'm not trying to, like, put anyone off or, like, shit on anybody that lives in, like, one of these type of places. But, like, I've seen... And like I said in the beginning of this video, I've binge watched a lot of these like crime murder videos, right? At like night. A lot of them are based in like apartment complexes, bro. It just makes me never want to live in an apartment complex. And I know it's not every single one, but you know what I'm saying? Like my anxiety just like, if you have anxiety and just shit like that, like you get, you will understand me, bro. Like I feel like some of you guys after just watching this, will never want to live in one of these places, bro. Out of which, 50 were children. In addition, okay. the center also has a common area designed for children to play whenever they want to. According to reports, Adrian was said to have kidnapped and murdered Madison the same night she went missing. Some might even what? say that the eight-year-old's life had come to an end the moment she packed her scooter and followed Adrian home. Why, though? That's what I'm trying to know. I know he's probably going to tell us, but why? Like... That's what I was saying in the beginning, bro. Like, what does a teenager's... Like, what happened? What goes through a nigga's head for you to do some shit like this, bro? He had promised to get her ice cream. Following that incident... What? Madison did not get to see the light of day again. The next day, she was found duct taped, strangled, stabbed... What? ...and almost taken sexual advantage of. Although okay, it is very bro. common to trace the behaviors of a serial killer back to their home, the same could not be said for Adrian. Neighbors testified that the boy's mother was quite friendly and that sometimes, when it was the season for holidays, she would prepare meals in large portions and invite her neighbors so that they could eat together. Taking so basically, this little fucking piece of shit 
took advantage of his mother's niceness. And because everybody thought, you know, because his mum's nice, her son surely will be nice, right? But this shit, like, niggas is, I'm telling you guys, just be careful, bro. There's some sick motherfuckers in this world, bro. I'm telling you. All these into consideration leaves you with one thought swindling around your head. How did Adrian grow up to be a monster? The dad. Let's be real. Where have we heard? Like, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not trying to be a dick. But we ain't heard from anyone. Like, I've heard about his mom and that's pretty much it. Where the dad at, bro? Where the dad at? Nigga probably in jail. Dark spiral of Adrian. According to reports, Adrian was an amiable and popular figure in the housing complex, who was mostly seen performing tricks with his yo-yo and sometimes playing around with his skateboard. One of the occupants at the Tannery okay. Art Center also affirmed this, saying, he was a lovely boy. As far as I know, he is a lovely boy. I think there is something horribly wrong if he did this, and I hope he gets help. I hope he doesn't go to jail for the rest of his life. Even what? Are you fucking stupid? No, that nigga, I don't give a fuck if he was a lovely boy my nigga like he ain't clearly what do you mean you hope he's not in a are you fucking stupid he just killed a kid boyfriend of madison's mother kirby scudder had something good to say about adrian he oh, described so he adrian as a soft-spoken admired well-liked and well-rounded that nigga play piano and hand, shit adrian the nigga was too nice at this point i bet what did he walk old people across the road as well my nigga, like the fuck his instagram account told a different tale altogether although his instagram account has since been taken down it was said that his handles were something like awkward yo-yoer and in his instagram bio he called himself a 15 year old yo-yoer that lives in santa cruz it was also okay. reported that the very day madison went missing adrian had posted a photo with a caption which he copied from the lyrics of a song the caption read the dreams in which i'm dying are the best i've ever had yeah i'm not gonna lie <laughs> listen i ain't gonna lie it always listen <laughs> yeah i ain't gonna lie <laughs> This them type of, uh, them disco niggas. Despite the lyrics being from one of Gary Weird Jules' disco popular niggas. song covers known as Before Mad World, disco, you have MySpace to admit that the shit. line is quite chilling. Before Adrian's account was taken down, it was reviewed by some reporters, and people who did the job mentioned that the accounts had a number of posts where he expressed how anxious, lonely, and unloved he felt. The reporters oh, also found one of his posts on Instagram where he posted a photo of himself with the caption, Wear all black and try to look powerful and hide the crippling anxiety. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know if you saw my facial expression. I was like, the fuck? What's he mean by that? <laughs> What's he mean? Toward the future and constant worry that I'll never find someone who loves me. Whether these posts were just a puberty-driven teenage phase or express- Like, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be that guy. And I know a lot of you guys are teenagers, so you are just probably like, I don't know, man. It's like, but when I was a teenager, I never felt like this, bro. Like, I just didn't fucking care. I went home and played fucking Black Ops 2, my nigga. Like, what do you mean? I don't give a shit if nobody loved me. I'm a teenager. I'm aware that, you know what I'm saying? I shouldn't be thinking about that because I'm fucking 15 years old. Like, of true mental illness. The sentiment surrounding Adrian stood the same. A well-rounded, kind young man. So the ultimate question is, what could explain Adrian's motives to commit such a horrible crime, where an innocent young girl had no choice but to pay the ultimate price? The motive and confession. Um, Jeffrey Russell, the district attorney at the time. I bet it's going to be because he was like jealous of how loved she was or some shit. Watch. Which is crazy because it's like... They literally said that this guy was popular in the area. Had said that they couldn't quite figure out the reason Adrian murdered Madison. He said, people do things for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes we understand them, sometimes we don't. The defense attorney in charge of Adrian's case, Larry Bigman, was however bent on proving that Adrian could seek rehabilitation in the juvenile justice system. He said that Adrian didn't have the intricacy to carry out the murder of Madison. In his okay. words, he's not a super sleuth. Gonzalez is a socially awkward, shy, and suicidal boy. That, combined with the stress of home life, school life... Okay, cool. <laughs> Boo hoo, my nigga, like, but that doesn't mean you should fucking kill motherfuckers just because you feel some type of way. And social life led him to take someone else's life instead of his own. His emotions hijacked his brain. He was an Damn, anxious flea on a hot brick. He didn't have the courage to kill himself, so 
he had to do something. On the other hand, the prosecutor in charge of Adrian's case had a very different opinion. According to him, Adrian's crime was one of the most egregious and shocking crimes in Santa Cruz. He added that all the while Adrian torturously did all that he did with Madison up until he killed her. He was neither remorseful nor regretful. And while the police the and FBI agents went searching for Madison, he was just so calm. Prosecutor Vasquez said, he's calm and very matter of fact, casually playing with his yo-yo. Even after Adrian got arrested and was being led away by the police, his face was devoid of emotion. According to the prosecutor and in opposition to the above statement made by Adrian's defense attorney, Adrian is a cold, calculated, sexual deviant killer who can't be rehabilitated. We're dealing with lifelong disorders. This is not a quick fix and there is no guarantee. Adrian's confessions would later uh, be read bro. out in court and sympathizers of the Middletons would not help but cringe especially considering how graphic the confession was. One extremely- Wait, so this nigga just confessed, bro? Oh yeah, lock that nigga up, bro. Fuck him. You know what I'm saying? Fuck all that other bullshit. That nigga should not be able to see sunlight again. This nigga just confessed everything and- <laughs> Listen, see ya. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See ya. The disturbing part of the confession was how Adrian had allegedly opened up to a detective and said that the thought of Madison dying made him sexually aroused. Whoa! Oh no, yeah. Hey, hey, <laughs> lock him up. Don't even listen. I'm talking about throw the key, bro. <laughs> throw the key somewhere. Adrian would later reveal to the police that he also stabbed Madison when he found out that she wasn't dead even after what? inside a bag. After Madison's parents had filed a missing person report, the police and even FBI what did she do began to him? a search to find their daughter. According to KTVU's Janine De La Vega, while these agents were searching for Madison, Adrian would go around spinning his yo- I didn't make the warning, by the way, because I don't have a warning on this channel. If you're not like, if you're very like, how could I explain it? Sensitive to this bullshit. Don't watch this shit. I mean, it's a little bit too late because I've said this now. <laughs> it was also recorded that Adrian was so interested in knowing if they had found anything that he went around asking for updates. Eventually, the police and FBI agents huh? saw in a surveillance video Adrian carting the body of Madison, who appeared dead huh? and throwing it into a large trash container at the Tannery Arts Complex. Shortly after the police and FBI agents found the body of Madison, Adrian had tried to make a run for it because he was also present at the scene. However, he was arrested before he had the chance. According to Quran 4 reports, Adrian revealed while in custody that he had thought of committing suicide while the police were searching for Madison. On the same day, however, his defense attorney, Larry Bigham, had told the reporters gathered outside, our job is to review evidence and conduct our investigation and make sure that the minor, like every citizen accused, receives a fair trial. At the end of the day, I am confident that this case will be handled professionally and thoroughly and fairly. According to the district attorney of Santa Cruz, Adrian was not only found guilty of murder, but also kidnapping and about four offenses relating to sexual crime. Lock him up, bro. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? Lock him up? Like, this isn't even like a tricky situation where you gotta get that mad evidence. Nigga killed someone because he was, you know what I'm saying? He didn't want to end himself, even though he was, you know what I'm saying? I'm keeping it real. I'm not trying to say, because listen, I'm not trying to get community guy strike on this channel. And for that reason, if Adrian got convicted, he would get sentenced to life in prison. Good. However, nigga. Adrian could not get such a sentence because he was still a teenager. I don't fucking care. What is this rule, bro? I'm sorry. Is this like an actual law, my nigga? Like you can't get a life sentence if you're a teenager? I don't give a fuck. Okay, I don't give a shit. If you do something like this, nigga, you're getting life. You need life. Fuck all of that. At the conclusion of Adrian's hearing in 2017, John Salazar, the Superior Court Judge of Santa Cruz, ruled that Adrian could now be tried under adult proceedings as he was already 18. According to Salazar, he based his ruling on evidence that Gonzalez was- Wait, did they wait until he was 18? What kind of shit is that? Sophisticated, intelligent, and observant. He also mentioned that there was barely enough time for Adrian to get rehabilitated by the operations of juvenile justice and that Adrian's case should be tried in adult courts if the gravity of the crime he committed is anything to go by. In 2019, however, a 1391 bill was passed by the state senate that children who are younger than 15 cannot be transferred to court for adults. 
California, my nigga, like what? John Salazar came out to say that it was unconstitutional. And as a result, Bigum, Adrian's defense attorney, appealed to the state Supreme Court because of Salazar's response. He made this move because if he were successful, Adrian would be sent back to juvenile court. Bigum said, that decision should come down soon. All of this is taking too long for everyone. It no doubt takes an emotional so toll on the victim's family, I, and yeah. it has put Adrian in an adult jail with more sophisticated criminals with no treatment. To Bigum's delight, the state Senate declared that Bill 1391 was constitutional, and this was after rounds of legal challenges. Bigum said, 1391 knows kids' teenage brains are under construction and that they have a heightened capacity for change. 1391 means that authorities have to look at the backstory. They have to look at the history. They have to look at the context and deal with the issues. Not just Adrian, but other 14 and 15 year old kids who commit very serious yeah, crimes. The fuck? This development paved the way for Adrian's case to continue. And as a result, a hearing was scheduled for April 15th. On April 15th, 2021, Adrian pleaded guilty to the murder of Madison. He fucking pleaded. I mean, like, the, duh. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, bro, like, the fuck? Like, it's, it's like this nigga wanted to go jail. However, because of the 1391 oh, approved bill, he would only need to remain in juvenile prison until he turned 25. That was his sentence. So this nigga what? Before his sentencing, however, he made a statement asking for forgiveness from Madison's family. What? He said, I understand there's very little I can say after all the pain and suffering I've caused. Nigga, suck my cock and balls. Talk about forgiveness, bitch. Are you stupid? My goal is to work on my issues so that no one has to oh, experience yeah. what you have endured. I am aware that this does not change the fact that I have brought you tragedy, loss, and devastation. I am hopeful. Yeah, man, just, hey, <laughs> fuck it. Murder my fucking eight-year-old daughter. Oh, uh, you're forgiven, though. Like, it's sick. For no fucking reason as well. That when I take the time to apologize, you may accept my apologies for the actions that I have done you kiss and my what ass. they have brought you. Liberating for Adrian was the fact that Michael Middleton, Madison's father, revealed that he had come to terms with the death of his daughter and bore no grudges against him. I ain't gonna lie, pops. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Um, fuck all that shit, my nigga. You and up for real. I don't give. The father revealed that does not make anything easier. It just allows me peace. The alternative nigga, shut should up. be to hold the darkness. But you just lame for it. I'm sorry. Soul. I refuse to poison my soul and existence. Forgiveness is the only path, and I believe that Madison would agree. Michael Middleton, however, also pointed out. Uh, I mean, your daughter was eight. Like, what do you mean she would have agreed? That Adrian should have been sentenced to life imprisonment instead. He disagreed with Adrian's defense attorney, expressing how he had doubts. This nigga looks scary, bro. How was this guy the nice kid? Look at his face, bro. He's like about to kill someone right now. The fuck? I do not see this scenario as possible. I mean, it's based fucking on the severity did, so. and sophistication of the acts that were committed. The judge, John Salazar, who presided over Adrian's case, ruled that Adrian must also be registered as a sex offender for life. He also mentioned that since the Santa Cruz we Senate Bill haircut. of 1391 states that juveniles cannot be prosecuted as adults, there were limits to the penalties he could impose on the offender. He said, there is no way for anyone to understand the profound and absolute pain and grief a family experiences when losing a child under these circumstances. I can add that the torture of losing a child in this manner was prolonged and extended by the change in the law. Our criminal justice system has been left with no answers nor comfort that can be provided to you to mitigate what you have had to endure. When Adrian turns 25, which is October 2024, he will be released from juvenile prison and would be required to pay compensation fees of more than 20 What? What? Are you serious, bro? $2,000. While some believe that since Adrian committed this heinous crime at such a young age, he should indeed be given another shot at life. However, many others are the opinion that 10 years in the system and a permanent spot on the sex offenders list is nowhere near a reasonable penalty for this- Yeah, nigga, me! I think that! The fuck? Horrific crime. Thanks for tuning in to Twisted Minds. That was the case of Adrian Gonzalez, and why don't you go ahead and click- If you like this video, be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you guys are new, okay? Share this video to anyone that might be interested. And I'll see you guys next time in the next video, boys. Peace.